I'm Vinny Palate. Great to have you with us here on Closing Arguments. And at this point in the program, we're going to open up our unsolved case file. What we do is put a spotlight on a story, on a case, on a mystery uh, that needs some help. And investigators need, need help. The family needs help. And, and at some point, there has to be some sense of justice. Tonight's story is one we've been covering since January. It was January 7th when a mother of three in Chula Vista, California, went missing. Her name is Maya Miliette. Our affiliate KGTV has the story. We haven't heard from her since then. We don't know where her where about. Maya's sister says it's not like Maya to just leave without contacting anyone. She also missed her daughter's birthday. She's unlike her to miss her daughter's 11th birthday. Maya's husband told ABC 10 News that they got into an argument and she left to, quote, blow off some steam. We've been having, uh, you know, like problems. Now that, you know, she missed our daughter's birthday, um, there's something keeping her from contacting us. So um, my sister-in-law is, you know, I don't really try to think about that stuff because it's like mind numbing, but I'm trying to stay positive. It appears she took her phone, but is not responding. I'd like to text her, you know, I don't know if she's getting it, but I said, hey, babe, at least let us know or call someone. And just at least let us know you're okay. Maya Miliete's family has tried everything to find her, from searches at local parks to a Facebook page and multiple flyers with her pictures, even deciding to hire their own private investigator. Yeah, we're still here waiting for answers. We have no answers. We have no leads to go by. Richard Drew Lay is Maya's brother-in-law. Mary Chris is her sister. It's been really a nightmare. It's It's been an agonizing, painful, you know, it's hard. Breaking. Maya's car is still at home. There's been no activity on her bank statements and her phone goes straight to voicemail. ABC 10 News spoke to her husband who said he spent hours working with detectives from Chula Vista police trying to find his wife, saying he is grateful for all of the search efforts. See a little prayer for her so she can return to us and to her three children. All right, folks, if you have any information, here is the number to call, 619-691-5151, 619-691-5151. Maya Miliette, mother of three, missing since January. I want to bring in our guest joining us by phone in Chula Vista, California, Maya Miliette's sister, Mary Chris Julier, and her husband, Richard um, Mary Chris Richard, uh, thanks for coming back. Good evening. Onto the show. Uh, first of all, Thank you, ben. any updates, any progress in the search uh, for, for Maya? Um, you know, we're searching every weekend. Um, and then for the last, um, just this past Friday, they did a second search warrant at the house. Um, but we don't have any information or any lead yet. Um, so we don't really know anything yet. Uh, we're st it still feels like we're still on ground zero, but we're hoping we're getting some progress soon. And you mentioned a second um, search warrant or a second search of the house. Um, Correct. You have been holding, um, uh, people have been getting together, you know, in search parties, but also um, demonstrating um, Tell us about the demonstration that you had at, at the Chula Vista Police Department. Yeah, we did have a, a, peace, a peaceful rally in front of the Chula Vista um, uh, Police Department just to keep my sister's name afloat. Uh, we want to make sure, you know, her name is just on the spotlight and, you know, her, her case is not going to go cold case. That's what our worries are. Um, and also on that day, Tuesday, um, May 4th, we did have um, a talk, uh, we did a, uh, spoke to, in front of the um, council members of Chula Vista, um, at Chula Vista. Um, we want our voices heard, and uh, we want, we, we asked for help, we plead for help. We plead to help my sister case be solved, and we, we want some answers, and you know, with that, we were hoping we can get my sister's case resolved. Richard, do you feel like you're, you're getting the response that you need 
from uh, folks in Chula Vista? Um, yeah, they've been you know in contact with us a little bit more um, ever since the rally. It's just you know they they haven't answered any other questions, so that's a little frustrating. But you know we're we're looking forward to working with them. We wanna we wanna become you know friends. We wanna be you know all this pointing fingers and who's right, who's wrong. It's not working for us. It's, we need to become you know the community's got to come together and 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 work together. And, mm-hmm. and so. So we have an opportunity this Tuesday. We're going to sit down with the lead detectives and, um, you know, and come to an agreement and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, you know, learn, learn and become a team, you know. So Larry, my husband, um, we've got some new information relative to him. I want to play this for you and then get your reaction after we play it. Uh, this, again, is from our great affiliate, KGTV. Family, friends, even strangers have turned up to search for Maya Miliete every week for months now. And many have wondered why her husband, Larry Miliete, hasn't joined those searches. In an ongoing conversation with ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty, Larry sent the following. Unlike the search parties, I visited likely places she would visit, but to no avail. Wishful thinking, I guess. I rely mostly on the authorities because they are the subject matter experts and have dealt with these situations before. A temporary gun violence response Restraining order was issued to Larry. Documents show he owned eight registered and 14 unregistered firearms. The order describes two photos of the Miliete's kitchen table full of guns, high capacity magazines, U.S. passports, and ammo. It describes one of the photos showing the Miliete's four year old son standing on the table surrounded by the guns. The order says the boy had immediate access to the illegal assault weapons and the 14 other firearms and ammunition, creating a potential extreme danger to the child. Larry states that none of the firearms were loaded and my son was not in any danger. Also adding, all my firearms were purchased legally and all went through the 10-day waiting period as per California law. How else would they have a list of all my firearms if they were not registered? Doesn't make any sense. The order prevents him from owning or buying any more guns. San Diego PD filed the paperwork on May 5th. The written declaration showed a number of guns missing. Only two of the total 20 firearms have been accounted for by law enforcement. Of the guns police do have, forensic criminologist and retired detective Dr. Ron Martinelli said there isn't much they can do with them at this point. With the gun violence restraining order, they can take the weapons. They just can't test the weapons. In order to test the weapons, again, they have to have a nexus. They have to have some sort of connection between a weapon or weapons and a murder which they haven't been able to establish yet. Larry Miliete told officers he knew they were coming for his firearms and he gave multiple firearms to his friends. He won't say who or where they are, leaving more questions in an emotional and difficult time for Maya's loved ones. The documents also said Larry had illegal assault weapons and unregistered firearms. That could get him in more trouble. He could be charged as a felony. In and of itself, the possession of the firearms unregistered to him you know, probably unless it's alleged they're accused or used in the commission of an offense, probably looking at more of a misdemeanor charge. Okay, Merry Christmas. Let me get first your response. All these guns, did you, did you know about these guns? Did your sister know about all these guns that Larry had? Um, personally, I know he has guns. Um, I know he has some, but I don't know how much or how many he has. Um, it's because we do as a family, we go out shooting and, um, to the, to the, um, uh, shooting, uh, firing, but, um, to have, you know, unregistered or anything like that, I really don't know, but it, you know, the shooting is, um, it's a hobby for, I guess, for my brothers and my brother-in-law also. So they do have some, some guns. Was it surprising to you that he allegedly is giving guns away now? Yes, that was a, a, a total surprise. And I haven't really heard about that news yet. So it's the first time I'm hearing um, about you know, the whole story. I, I knew um, they put it out there that he did have you know, um, confiscated um, some of his guns. Um, but it, it is a, a surprise for me that he did you know, um, give away his guns. Um, yeah. So I, I really don't know anything about that. And, and there's 
allegedly, uh, I think there's a, tr a court date that he's supposed to appear at next month. Will Correct. you be going there as well? Uh, we, we don't know yet. We're not sure yet. Um, we, we're probably going to talk about it as a family and also we're going to sit down and maybe um, ask our lawyer if it's, if it's advisable for us to go and sit down uh, at the court. Richard, your reaction to um, the, 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 this issue with all these guns, some of them, according to investigators, unregistered. Again, he's, I think he's denying all of that. But an allegation of un unregistered guns, giving guns away. Um, does, does that give you any concern, Richard? Um, well, yeah, obviously. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I think giving a gun away is illegal. Unless you do it legally or through a you know through a transaction, um, I'm not sure if there's a ten wait a ten day waiting period for that transaction to take place. But um, yeah, I mean it's alarming, and you know we just we 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 wish him you know we, we don't want to point fingers, but you know if he's taking pictures with the kids with the guns there, uh, I don't know what you know, what person or parent would do that with their kids, you know. Um, it's strange. I, I, it's I strange think, behavior, yeah, Richard. It's, it's, it's not, weird. it's not yeah. normal. It's, it's exactly. not normal. Um, you know, people are allowed to have guns. You have guns. People across yeah. the country have guns. No, no problem. But exactly. taking these pictures with kids and then giving away guns in the middle of a investigation where yeah. everyone's looking for right. a wife. Well, not right. everyone's looking for his wife because uh, it doesn't sound, Mary Chris, like Larry's <laughs> doing a lot of looking. Uh, he said he visited likely places, and is going to. He visited, yeah. He visited. What is that? What is? Did, did did he did he tell you guys that he was going to visit these likely places? Oh. And did he share with you what the likely places are? Because maybe you and your search party would want to go there as well. I wish he did, you know, tell us where he visited and maybe likelihood of, you know, he thinks my sister might be. Um, yeah, that would be that would be nice for him to share that to us. But, you know, as um, I think uh, um, we haven't talked to him, we haven't spoken to him for al almost three months now. So, you know, there's haven't been any communication between the family and and Larry. So, um, yeah, I wish um, he would um, share that information or places that he thinks it's possible where my sister could be. And how about his family? Um, is there, have you seen any member of his family, whether, I don't know if he has siblings or if his parents are around, um, have they been vocal at all looking for the mother of their grandchildren or the mother of their uh, mm -hmm. nieces, nephews, <laughs> any of that happening? Uh, not, not that we are aware of. If they do, again, we don't know. Um, we haven't, as I said, we haven't really had any communication with them. I know his parents has been taking care of the kids 100% of that. Um, he does have a sibling, but he lives in he he lives in Texas. So um, none of his again, none of his family have reached out to us um, of any help on searching my sister. Um, so, yeah, we haven't really had any um, good communication with them. How great has the, the community been? I mean, I, I watch, you know, oh, we, we watch the yeah. stories that we get from KGTV all the time, and it just seems like so many folks are, um, are, are doing everything they can to help and support you guys. Man, yeah, that's something we always bring up in our interviews, that, you know, the Chula Vista Police, I mean, the, the community, you know, volunteers, people around the world, you know, they, they want to help and they're out there. I mean, they, they're not just talking about it. They're actually moving and, and, you know, prayers and they send us messages and send us pictures like, Hey, I searched this area today. You know, um, it's, it touches our hearts, you know, cause we can't be there, you know, 24 hours a day, but we have, <laughs> we call it the our, miles search party or miles, yeah. miles army is out there looking for her. So, yeah, it, and, it's been over overwhelmingly um, thankful and um, uh, supportive of you know of the the community. Uh, it's it's heartwarming to see all the support uh, that's been coming our way. The prayers, um, especially you know, and messages that lifting our spirit and keeping us strong and keeping our our our, our fight 
and uh, our goal to, to search for my sister and to find her. I just wanted to share a couple of the comments uh, that folks posted, um, you know, because we're posting the story as well, keeping the images out there and, and, the, and the story uh, and the front burner. Um, Tina writes, Larry has seemed suspect since the beginning. Yes, they may have been living in separate rooms, but if your roommate goes missing, you look for them. Um, <laughs> Which, yeah. which makes a lot of sense. What exactly was the, the living situation, and did, did Maya share any of that with either of you? Um, and no, actually, it, when Larry said that, it was a surprise to me and the family that they do have that living situation, because I haven't, my sister really haven't shared that um, with us. We are, you know, we are close, but um, she haven't, said anything about that living situation that they're living on a separate room. So it, that was a surprise to us. Cody tonight writes, and I think this is what a lot of us uh, are, are thinking. I've been with my wife 11 years, and if she went missing, I would spend every waking minute looking for her. I would move heaven and earth to find her. And unfortunately, yes. we're, we're not seeing that. Was, was there any talk of, of a divorce? Was, was Maya going to seek a divorce? Or was it, Correct. Was that happening? What, what do we know about that? That's, um, you're absolutely right. Um, on that day, that January 7th, um, she actually filed um, for the divorce. She, she submitted um, uh, like a lawyer um, filed papers um, on that day. Um, the Thursday when they had that big argument. So she was ready. She, she was actually going to see a lawyer um, the following Tuesday. Wow. Well, Mary, Chris, and Richard, um, our thoughts are with you and your, and your family. Thank you so much. And we'll, Thank and, you, Benny. And as I said, we're going to continue to stay on the story. Uh, good luck in your meeting with detectives. And yeah. um, let's hope that um, an answer, answer comes for everyone here. Um, thank you so right. much. Amen. No, thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so God much. God bless. God bless, guys. Thank you so you much. You too.